Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today I will talk about a, a, a topic that I don't like so much. It's about OPCDA. And I don't like so much OPCDA because we have better options right now. We have OPCUA and OPCUA is really nice. It's fantastic. It's uh, very compatible with the modern networks, with the mod with all modern way to do things with cybersecurity, etc. OPCDA uh, is a very legacy, very old, um, but it's still very popular. And that's interesting that this is still very popular, but um, and it, that's the reality in 2022. Um, so uh, what I will show you is how you can connect two stations. One station will be the OPCDA server and the other station will be the OPCDA client. And of, of course, these stations will be different computers on a network. Uh, so you can know how you can use the Aviva Edge or PCDA server to connect with it uh, from a remote computer. And the remote computer will be using also Aviva Edge uh, as, a OPC, as an OPCDA client. Uh, it's not an unusual architecture to use OPCDA to link Aviva Edge on two computers, but uh, let's, I, I will use Aviva Edge. You can use any other software as a client. Uh, that's the idea. Uh, but I will use a web just for demonstrative, demonstrate just for demonstration. So uh, let's start. So I have my two virtual machines here. Uh, I should tell you that uh, this virtual machine is a clone of this. So uh, right now both have the same uh, computer name. For OPC communications, it's important that you cannot have, or you or you don't have a, two computers with the same uh, name. So let me double check here. That's the name here for this computer. Uh, for this one, Okay, it's the same name. So I will change the name in the client station. Uh, name. Here your PC name. Uh, that's the first thing that I should do. Just because this is a virtual machine that I created from the other. Uh, probably you don't need to do this uh, because your computers will have uh, will have different uh, different names by default so i change the name here on my client station we'll start the computer or the virtual machine to apply the changes meanwhile i will create an application on aviva edge to work as an opc uh, da server uh, i don't think i have a license on this virtual machine because it's new but i should have the 40 yeah the 40 evaluation hours as you can see, I need, I never open a VVG here. It's using the evolution, the full evolution hours. Uh, so it's new, everything new on this virtual machine. So it opens the PC demo application by default. I will create a new application. Okay. Security system, I don't really need it. And to enable, well, I will add a couple tags here, or maybe only one, T1. To enable the OPC server, the only thing that you need to do is go here to runtime in runtime tasks. Uh, you should have the OPC DA server task and set it to automatic startup. And that's it. If you if you start the, the runtime. Oh, by the way, uh, I don't like the firewall. Turn it on when you are going to work with OPC. You can basically cre create a, a rule to allow incoming and out outgoing communications on a very specific port. But for uh, demonstrative purposes, I will turn off the firewall because I don't want to create the rules that will make the video that will that that will make the video to be longer. So I will basically will turn off the firewall here. Um, before I 
forget about that. I will I will also disable the firewall on the client station. And that's important because if you have the firewall with a restriction of the port that the OPC DA uses, it won't, it won't work and you need the firewall uh, rules on both computers. That's interesting. Uh, you need the same rules on both, but I will disable both firewalls used to make it simple. Okay, so I start the, the runtime and the OPC server starts. Uh, of course, if I connect with my client station, which is here, and I will start now to create a new project. This should have the 40 hours also, okay. Okay, I will create a new application. Security system. I don't need it. And the uh, OPC DA client, I will use a legacy one because it's easier to configure. So basically the remote server name here, I will use the IP address to avoid any problem. Uh, a problem I mean with my uh, DNS. Uh, so I will point directly to the IP address, which is this. And if I click here in server identifier, it should show me the servers uh, here on the, on the remote computer. And I will select one. And if I double click here on the item field or right click and select OPC browser, well, it will fail because it cannot find the OPC server, right? It doesn't have access. So it's it's normal that it fails. Uh, that's uh, when you try to make it work just by installing the software and without doing any additional configuration that uh, OPC DA requires at the DCOM level, at Windows level to work. Uh, so let's, let me save this just for a second and leave that running. Uh, Okay, so let's start with the configuration for DCOM and everything else on Windows. I will stop the server here. And uh, it's, yeah, I will stop the server here and I will start the configuration. The first configuration that I need to do, it's over the DCOM modules. Um, so if you type DCOM, uh, you will have this component services uh, option there. You start that, a console window will start. Uh, here in component services in computers, the first configuration is global. You need to configure the computer, the comp settings. So right click on computer, go to properties. Here options, it's fine. The full properties is fine. MSDDC is fine. The full protocols is fine. You need to go to comp security. In comp security, you need to click on edit limits. And for everyone, you need to be sure you need to check that this is, these two options are enabled. Uh, and also for anonymous logon, you need to en enable remote access. So that's the first thing. Here on launch and activation permissions, also you click on edit limits. For everyone, you need to enable everything. And that's it, you need to click on okay. And you need to click on okay one more time. Accept this message. And the global configuration for DCOM is done. Here also you need to go to DCOM config and find the OPC server uh, uh, name here. My OPC server name is Studio Studio OPC Studio, Studio SCADA OPC server version five. Version five is for 2020. For 8.1 is version four. For 8.0 is version three. For 7.1 is version two, etc. So uh, version five is for uh, Abby Batch 2020. You right click here and go to properties. Uh, you need to change the authentication level to connect. Uh, location is good, security and security. You need to cost customize all these options, all these three options. So here I did. You need to add a user, everyone. 
by the way, I'm doing this to make it work, not to make it secure. If you want to make it secure, you might want to use a user, uh, the user with a password. Uh, you need to create a user and the password in both computers. Both will ha it should have the same password, by the way. And the same, the username should be it should be the same in both. And that might be that will be more secure. But just to make it simple and just to make it work uh, faster, I'm using the everyone user. So I'm allowing I'm allowing uh, all everything for that user here. The same thing for access permissions. If I click at it, let me add everyone. And for everyone, I will enable this two options. Well, remote access only, the other one was already enabled. And here for configuration permissions, if I click on uh, customize, I can also type everyone. By the way, I think this is not uh, really required, but uh, I just want to be sure that everything has everyone there. Uh, in at points, you might want to change this default system protocols just to connection oriented TCP IP because we will be using TCP IP. And identity, you might want to leave interactive user alone and that's fine. So you don't need to change anything here. And click on OK. OK, so for now we are done in this window. The next step is go to the local security policy editor. And here you need to enable a couple of things. The first thing that you, you need to enable is here in local policies, security options. And you need to enable this to um, become, you need to configure this to the decom options here to become policies. Here on the first one, if you double click, this window will, will be open. If you click edit security, uh, make sure that everyone has the, these two options enabled. Just click on OK, just click on OK one more time, and that's it. The same thing for the second DCOM option, edit security, everyone has everything enabled. Click on, click on OK, click on OK one more time, and that's it. You need to scroll down a little bit and find network access and this option, let everyone permissions apply to anonymous users. So this should be enabled also. And that's it. Uh, that's the only, that's the required configuration for this. So you need to close this window and after having all that configured, you should restart the computer. So let's restart without installing any update. And meanwhile, I want to talk about the, the client. In the client station, uh, usually people say, you don't need to do anything else more than disable the firewall or adding the firewall rules. That's not true on Windows 10 and Windows 8.1 also, I think. And in the future, I think also, you need to configure also the uh, local security policy uh, to, to basically enable a single option here. Uh, you need to go to local policies, security options, scroll down to network access, and this one, the, the same, the same option that we disabled the last uh, as the last one in the in the server, this this should be enabled also on the client computer. So after that, you can click OK, and that's it. Uh, it's enabled, and you need to restart also the client computer. So the server is starting. Uh, starting right now and the client is restarting. Let's wait for the server to come back. It's back. So the only thing that I need to do now is to start my Aviva Edge Studio. So my runtime can be started with the OPCDA server. Yeah, evaluation, that's fine. Client is starting. I will start the OPC server. I will put my tag here, it's T1. We set a value for it, uh, one, two, three, four. And in the client station, I will start Aviva Edge also. And my client project project should be there. 
if I configure everything correctly, I should be able now to browse uh, on the OPC server. So let's open this. And okay, this that's my IP address. I can browse for the server. Yeah, that works. And I can browse here for an item. Yeah, it works, so I can browse. But no, that's not all. We should make sure that we can read also the tags, values. The browsing is not everything that you need to be sure about. So let's select the T1 tag. I will create here also a T1 tag. And we'll put T1 here. I will enable the uh, OPC DA 2.05 messages. And just to see what's happening, right? It's not mandatory. It's I just want to enable it to see what's going on. So yeah, you can see here uh, we have the one, two, three, four value. We can even change it, and the value should be updated here. Uh, we can also read uh, from the from the badge uh, server uh, some system tags. So let's say the second tag. And this should be changing all the time. So T2. Uh, yeah, the second tag is changing. This comes, this is coming from the from the OPC server, as you can see here. So it works. As uh, you can see from the scratch, we have configured both server and client to uh, communicate using OPC DA Classic. Um one more time, if you have the option to use something different than OPC DA, I really recommend you go through that way. OPC UA is very nice. But if you don't have any other option and you really need to use OPC DA, I hope this video might be or will be useful for you. If you have any questions or any comments, please leave this in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.